Lonzo in the NBA. You got Melo in the NBA. Yes. Yellow's in the G League. What no, Yellow ain't in no G League. Wait, where's he at now? Yellow in the G League by itself. It's a, man. The the NBA door has closed when Melo did that. When Melo did. So I said, as long as all of us get on the bus, right? When that door closed, we good. How do you so, get? How do you, how do you get how you get Jello up to the to the big to the big to the big to the big show? Jello to the big show on this man. Here's the thing: Jello got to the G League with no representation, no nothing. So now you got the representation of Rock Nation. Do your job. Get my son to the goddamn tryout or whatever camp and watch him go do his own thing. He got the name. He got the body. He got both of his legs working. He been working out. Hey, but see if somebody else was trying to get in the league and working out with the number one pick, that'd be a big story. But Jello been working out with Melo and Jermaine, the number one pick, all this time. He been working out with Lonzo every day. So it's like, Jello's already in a situation. Don't think I'm going to have three boys in the same household and one of them going to be like, you know what, I ain't going to make it. I don't feel like working out today. They cut off from the same cloth. And everything they say Melo and Zoe can do, Jello can do. Oh, you got to get stronger. You got to get a better jump shot. Jello shoot better than both of them, and he's bigger and stronger than both of them. So, bigger, stronger. Is there going to be, I don't know if they're going to be a summer league. Is they going to have enough time for a summer hey, league? Or they just... You don't even need a summer league. Check this out. You got Lonzo, and you got Melo. You got two bookends. Jello in the middle. Don't think that the, the representation or whatever can't say, excuse me, can you uh, give Jello a shot over Let's see what he looks like with his brother. They, he got that now. And, you know, you know, Rock Nation also got that pool with the, where they can talk behind the scenes right. and get Jello a tryout or something. And That's all you want. You just want his foot in the door. His foot going to be in the door on the fact that look what he bringing to – he can go to any franchise right now and watch how the franchise blows up. Why? His last name is Ball. His last name is Ball, and he can play. He can shoot at a high clip. So what I'm saying is he's going to get the opportunity – and like I said, the best thing, hey, put him over there with Charlotte and watch what happened. But he's going to get another tryout somewhere else. I don't know. I'll tell him to do their job because what they did, Jello got both ankles ready. He healthy. He's running. He playing. He's shooting. As soon as he steps somewhere, folks are going to be like, oh, I didn't know he was this good. Now, he get with his brothers. Whoever he get with, Lonzo, Jello, I mean, uh, Mello, they're going to average 15 assists. Welcome to the Woj Low off-season special YouTube edition with all the stuff we didn't have time to dive into on the television show. Woj, whew, that was a lot, but we still got a lot we, to we get We left to. a lot. We left a lot on the bone here. A lot of meat on into. the old bone. Starting with the point guards. We could barely get into the point guards. There are so many that are on the market this summer. It's almost bad to be one of them because there's yeah. just is, there's there's more point guards than money. Let's start with Lonzo Ball, um, who is a restricted free agent in New Orleans. And I, I don't know where he's going to fall in this game of musical chairs, but anytime you're a restricted free agent, you look around at, okay, who's got cap room to offer me an offer sheet? Who needs a point guard? And there are a couple obvious candidates, right? I think in a perfect world for both Lonzo Ball and the Chicago Bulls, they end up together. But as you said, it is restricted free agency, which means that the Pelicans can match an offer, an offer sheet uh, from Chicago. They could also work a sign and trade and get some assets, or they could just let them go. Remember, we know New Orleans would like to get involved with Kyle Lowry. And I think, you know, there's a sense of, of perhaps them being resigned that Lonzo Ball won't be on their team next year, but can they, but can they, even if they match an offer sheet. Now you have them as an asset. I know the other thing you can count on with New Orleans right now, they've got that 10th pick in the draft, and they are attaching it to trade offers with Eric Bledsoe. So they want you to, you're going to have to take on that $18 million contract for this year for Bledsoe uh, and, and maybe even a Steven Adams in some scenarios. But I think certainly Bledsoe, if they're going to move on from 10. So they've been active in those talks, but... I think the Bulls and the Bulls and Pelicans talked about uh, Lonzo Ball at the trade deadline, and I thought they kind of got close. They were dancing around it. I think in the end, there was just some draft capital that the Bulls resisted putting in. They had obviously used picks to get Nikola Jokic, but Vucevic, uh, Vucevic, yeah, they did not get Nikola Jokic. They would be the throwing draft. a party in Chicago. They would have given Nikola all Jokic. the our tourist carnivores would have given all his picks. Vucevic, excuse me. Anyway. Uh, that's where I think a lot of this starts uh, with Ball. We talked about Dennis Schroeder on the TV show. 
you know, they certainly with the Lakers, the easy thing is for them just to do a deal together. But if he's out in the marketplace, if Chris Paul, Mike Connolly, Spencer Dinwiddie, Derek Rose, Derek Rose is another name in Chicago. I don't think he's at the, necessarily the top of their priority list, but if he doesn't return to New York, is there a role for Derek Rose with the Bulls? And I just think there are a lot of contingencies all these teams are working through. Well, I mean, there's a, just a ton of subplots that are interesting when you talk about the Pelicans. Number one, if they're dangling that 10 pick as part of a salary dump, I hope they're getting another first round pick in return that's just lower, right? I and hope maybe, they're trading down in the draft. That's right. Because to me, just giving up a first round pick, I, I get the reason, I get the salary mechanics, all that. They're, st I, I know that they have a million picks coming from the Lakers. They're still too early in this rebuild to start just giving away picks to me, unless you're getting, if you move down seven spots to Memphis or something like that's not so bad. You can get roughly equivalent players at 17 and 10, but this, this sort of is almost reminding me of Anthony Davis 2.0 when they got AD realized we have a transcendent talent and then just went a whole hog rushing to get veterans around him. And the team just wasn't good enough. And I think with Zion Williamson, I just think they have to be careful feeling the pressure is one thing like Zion is a transcendent talent. We saw with Trey young just now, if you're, if your your young guys might be 22, 23, if they're ready to win with talent around them, they're ready to win. I just, just be a little, just try to thread the needle like the Hawks did. And I think the Pelicans hope that if let's say they got Kyle Lowry veteran point guard, that it is in some way. And I don't think it's, they're not going to be in the NBA finals next year. But in some ways, it could impact their roster the way Chris Paul impacted those young players in Phoenix. I, I think it's I, – I understand the thinking. Uh, certainly, he'd improve them. They want better decision-making and maturity. All, all the things that certainly Lowry would bring you, but there's a big market for Kyle yeah. Lowry. And you're talking potentially $25 million a year, $30 million a year for Kyle Lowry. It's going to be – uh, expensive to get at him in free agency or a sign and trade after Phoenix. I'm hesitant to rule out anybody making the NBA finals like 10 months in advance. That was that. No one, if we had sat on this show a year ago and say, you know, we might make the finals Phoenix. Keep it up. We I thought, been, Hey, listen, when they made the first Paul trade, good. Hey, they're going to make the playoffs. I think they're good. a playoff team. We thought they'd be good, but finals was, yeah. was, I want to go back to Chicago for a second because I think it was kind of an under talked about story at the end of last season. They put in a lot of draft equity and Wendell Carter Jr., who's I think a decent NBA player, to get Vucevic, didn't make the play in tournament. Couldn't even make the play in tournament in these. Now Zach Levine was in health and safety protocols. That was a huge deal that really hurt their season. But I think it hasn't been talked about enough that this is a team that's under pressure to win next year. They have to get in the playoffs next year. They have to make a leap next year. And when you look at their core, it's they don't have this giant hawksy young core of guys. And that's why the Lonzo thing is so interesting to me. Are they going to be able to get him out and out in free agency? Is it going to cost them Lowry marketing, which is a name like you barely hear anymore. He, that, that was the rumored deal was Lonzo that, for marketing. That was the what, deal. What, what is going to happen in Chicago? Cause they need to put together a team. They're, they're alarmingly dependent right now on guys like Thad Young and Tomas Sadoransky. They need to fill out this roster. And, and you just mentioned Sadoransky. That's a player that there's there's a lot of interest in him there. And I think especially very good teams see him as a guy who can just fit in uh, and play a role. Yeah, this is an important summer for this Bulls team. And I think Billy Donovan, Mark Eversley, their GM, and of course, Arturis Karnishevis, their president, trying to figure out what, what the right mix of players looks like. This was a team that was playing really fast last year. And then you trade for Vucevic, and it slows down a little bit. And I think, you know, listen, he's a great, you can play a lot of offense through him. They've got to figure out, and, and playmaking was certainly, you know, a big part of that. I think, you know, this is a team that, uh, you're exactly right, they, they've got to figure out their identity. They've got to get a playmaker to run it. And the Vucevic trade sped up oh, the pressure on this team um, to, to uh, n not just, like you said, not just be able to get in the play-in, but be, like, they think they should have a team here now that is a is a perennial Eastern Conference uh, should be contender. They're still a ways away from that. And we forget things like this, but another guy that went out in that trade was Otto Porter, who the Bulls didn't give up a ton for Otto Porter. It was Jabari Parker and Bobby Portis, who now feels like a ton because he's fresh off the final stage. And Otto Porter just didn't work out. He, he was right. part of Talking about the potency of the greatest shooting backcourt man has ever seen in Klay Thompson and Steph Curry, assuming they're both healthy on the court with them. I have religiously had a problem with Lonzo Ball's aggression. 
Now, this year, it's improved dramatically. He's averaging 14 a game. He's shooting 38% from three-point range, about 42% from three uh, from, from the field. We get that. But the reason why we're praising him is because it's such an upgrade compared to what we have seen. He saw his little brother come into the league, take it by storm. God bless his son, LaMelo, who broke his wrist, according to reports. That's a bad He's going to be out for the season. Probably going to cost the rookie of the year honors, which means Anthony Edwards is going to get it. But the point is this. LaMelo comes into the league, and uh, LaMelo is aggressive. LaMelo don't give a damn what anybody got to say. He going for it. Lonzo has been passive, and I don't believe anyone who is passive in any way on the offensive side of the ball should be on the court with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. I don't find you Lonzo, got, I, 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 I don't I, find Lonzo you, passive. Listen, you got, you got Draymond. Draymond is your point forward, okay? You don't need Lonzo as much as the Clippers do. Kawhi Leonard has been crying for a point guard behind the scenes. He desperately needs one. That's not the case with Golden State. I'm not arguing. And don't take the ball out of Steph Curry's hands either. I'm not arguing that the Warriors need Lonzo more than the Clippers. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, like, what team does Lonzo not fit on? He'll, you need some perimeter defense. You need some rebounding out of your backcourt. He court. can play. You need some court vision. You need pinpoint passing. You need unselfishness. You need a guy where the ball doesn't stick with him even as he facilitates your offense. You need a guy taking seven, eight threes a game and hitting almost 40% of them. Like, what team does that not work on? And, and, and most of all, which I see with both ball brothers in the NBA, and it's a shame what just happened to... LaMelo, who was going to win Rookie of the Year, and now he's going to, as you mentioned, miss the rest of the year. What I see from them both, they don't care about their stats. They don't care about, well, I'm going to put up 20 points or whatever it is. All they care about is helping the team win. You can see it on every possession. Uh, I think it'd be a huge bonus, a huge benefit to the Warriors. Uh, I, I don't think so because you have Draymond there, and I think that that's enough. I think that he may, he potentially gets in the way. I look at him with the Clippers as being ideal. And, oh, by the way, I'm not a believer that LaMelo doesn't care about his numbers. I think Lonzo is that way. I don't think – I think it's a flat-out lie that LaMelo doesn't care about his I mean, numbers. They just I'm not saying – he plays the right way. I'm not trying to imply otherwise. I love LaMelo Ball's game so far, what I've seen. But what I'm saying is – He's cognizant of his numbers. So what are you I saying about it. aggression? Are you saying you want players on your team that do care about their numbers? I want guys that are aggressive. And I've been, listen, I'm on the record. The only argument I've ever, I mean, the only vehement argument where I wasn't inquisitive, I literally challenged Magic Johnson. Aaron. Why are you drafting Lonzo Ball ahead, ahead of De'Aaron Fox? Especially when De'Aaron gave it to him in the tournament. 39 gave in the to tournament, yeah. destroyed him. Yeah. And listen, De'Aaron Fox, today... I would still take the Aaron Fox ahead of Lonzo. Such a nice overall listen, game have nowadays. You been, have you been watching yeah, yeah. the, the no, Aaron Fox? I mean, Fox? listen, 